Summary of the Winner's Brain 8 Methods to Successful by Mark Finsky and Jeff Brown Overview In The Winner's Brain by Mark Finsky and Jeff Brown, the authors embark on a fascinating journey to uncover what sets apart those who achieve extraordinary success. They begin by taking readers on a quick tour of the brain, highlighting its incredible complexity and potential. With over 100 billion brain cells working in harmony, the brain is a powerhouse that influences every aspect of our lives, from thinking and moving to experiencing the world around us. The authors delve into the history of modern neuroscience, explaining how our understanding of the brain has evolved and how this knowledge can be harnessed to develop what they call a winner's brain. They introduce eight essential factors that contribute to this process. Self-awareness, motivation, focus, emotional balance, memory, resilience, adaptability, and brain care. Throughout the book, Brown and Finsky share numerous brainstorms, which are exercises designed to help readers optimize their brain function. These exercises are practical and accessible, aimed at boosting the brain's potential and enhancing overall well-being one. The authors also include interviews with individuals they believe exemplify the qualities of a winner's brain. These interviews feature a diverse group of successful people, including actress Laura Linney, musician B.B. King, gymnast Carrie Strug, and artist Andrew Wyeth. Through these stories, readers gain insights into how these individuals have harnessed their brain power to achieve greatness. One of the most intriguing aspects of the book is the discussion on mirror neurons and their role in empathy. The authors explain how understanding and leveraging these neurons can improve our ability to connect with others and navigate social interactions. They also explore the importance of focus and the challenges posed by distractions, offering strategies to maintain concentration and achieve goals. In the final chapter, Brown and Finsky emphasize the importance of brain care. They suggest practical steps such as engaging in moderate physical activity, enjoying hobbies, eating a balanced diet, and getting sufficient sleep. These practices, they argue, are crucial for maintaining a healthy and high-functioning brain. Overall, The Winner's Brain provides a comprehensive and engaging overview of how we can optimize our brain function to achieve success and fulfillment in life. The authors blend scientific insights with practical advice, making the book both informative and actionable. 1. Self-awareness Winners are conscious of how they interact with the rest of the world and how they interact with the rest of the world. A high degree of self-awareness allows you to be more productive in your relationships, career, and other areas of your life that are essential to you. If you want to do self-awareness work for yourself, there seem to be three things you need to know. To begin, you must first recognize your own abilities. If you want to succeed, you need to know what capabilities you have and how to use them to achieve your objectives. Second, you must be aware of your flaws. You'll constantly be focused on the wrong things if you mistake your deficiencies for strengths. Third, you must comprehend your own motivations. You'll be successful if you can apply your abilities, while minimizing your flaws, to something that is intrinsically compelling to you. The majority of individuals are unaware that self-awareness is a talent that can be learned. One of the most effective methods is to concentrate on mindfulness. According to the writers, Mindfulness refers to a present-focused, non-judgmental, and non-reactive manner of thinking about oneself and situations. You can see your strengths, shortcomings, and goals for what they are, enabling you to make more informed decisions about your next actions. Example. One of the examples provided in the book is about a professional athlete who used self-awareness to enhance his performance. This athlete realized that his pre-game anxiety was affecting his performance negatively. By becoming more self-aware, he identified the specific thoughts and feelings that triggered his anxiety. He then worked with a sports psychologist to develop techniques to manage these triggers, such as visualization and positive self-talk. As a result, he was able to transform his anxiety into focused energy, leading to improved performance on the field. Practical Application The author suggests several practical exercises to develop self-awareness. One such exercise is keeping a journal to track daily thoughts, emotions, and reactions. This practice helps individuals to identify patterns in their behavior and understand the underlying causes of their actions. 
Another exercise involves seeking feedback from trusted friends or colleagues to gain an external perspective on one's behavior and performance. By incorporating these practices, individuals can enhance their self-awareness, which in turn can lead to better decision-making, improved relationships, and greater overall success. 2. Motivation Even when the rewards are far away, or the chores appear little and routine, winners employ motivation to overcome challenges. Most individuals believe that motivation is a magical thing that happens or doesn't and has no influence. However, research informs us that motivation is a three-phase process that occurs in your brain. The authors refer to the first step of the process as mapping because it is at this phase that the brain maps out the end destination. This occurs in the front part of your brain, which sifts through all possible aims and consequences before deciding on the optimal goal given the circumstances. If you were driving a car, this would be the equivalent of programming your GPS to your destination. Once your brain is locked onto the objective, it moves on to the rev phase of the process. Dopamine kicks in, causing you to feel the need to do something, and you begin working toward your objective or destination. The fourth and most important step is drive, where the rubber hits the road. The limbic system and prefrontal cortex sections are used to keep this process going. It's not necessary to comprehend the science behind what's going on. Still, it is essential to recognize that winners are masters at completing this three-step process. In contrast, normal individuals stall out somewhere along the route. This is especially vital when you need to do the tedious but necessary chores to meet your objectives. Focusing on the tangible components of the tasks at hand and associating their accomplishment with the overarching aim you're attempting to attain is the antidote to this. Understanding motivation. Motivation can be broken down into intrinsic and extrinsic types. Intrinsic motivation comes from within and is driven by personal satisfaction and the joy of accomplishing something meaningful. Extrinsic motivation, on the other hand, is influenced by external rewards such as money, recognition, or praise. Both types of motivation play a role in achieving success. But the authors highlight that intrinsic motivation tends to be more sustainable and fulfilling in the long run. Example. One compelling example from the book involves a young entrepreneur who started a tech company. Initially, his motivation was largely extrinsic. He was driven by the desire to make money and gain recognition in the industry. However, as he faced numerous setbacks and challenges, he realized that these external rewards were not enough to keep him going. He began to reflect on what truly mattered to him and discovered a deeper, intrinsic motivation, the passion for innovation and the desire to create products that could make a difference in people's lives. This shift in motivation helped him to persevere through tough times and ultimately achieve greater success. Practical Application To cultivate motivation, the authors suggest several strategies. One effective method is setting clear achievable goals that align with one's values and passions. This helps to create a sense of purpose and direction. Another strategy is to break down larger goals into smaller, manageable tasks, which can provide a sense of progress and accomplishment along the way. Additionally, the book recommends surrounding oneself with supportive and like-minded individuals who can provide encouragement and accountability. This social support can be a powerful motivator, especially during challenging times. By understanding and nurturing both intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, individuals can develop a more resilient and sustained drive to achieve their goals. 3. Focus Winners can concentrate on the most critical elements in a range of situations. In our society of continual distractions, it's becoming increasingly difficult to focus on the kind of deep labor that leads to achieving our most important goals. Even though our brains have many resources to assist us focus, science says that we can only focus on one subject at a time. You've probably heard it all before, so instead of focusing on why we fall off track, let's concentrate on how to get back on track when we do. To begin, confess to yourself that you have gotten off course. Recall the original task and why it's so essential to you. Remove the distractions from your life, such as your cell phone and email. Choose a starting place and give yourself a verbal signal such as go. Pay close attention to the minor aspects of what you're working on to gain a fresh perspective and immerse yourself in the project. In The Winner's Brain by Mark Finsky and Jeff Brown. 
Focus is described as a critical component for achieving success. The authors refer to it as the focus laser, emphasizing its power to direct mental energy towards specific goals and tasks. This concentrated effort allows individuals to cut through distractions and maintain a clear path towards their objectives. Understanding focus. The book explains that focus is not just about paying attention, but about maintaining sustained attention on what truly matters. This involves filtering out irrelevant information and resisting the temptation to multitask, which can dilute the quality of one's efforts. The authors highlight that focus is a skill that can be developed and refined through practice and intentional strategies. Example from the book. One illustrative example from the book involves a renowned surgeon who attributes his success to his exceptional ability to focus. During surgeries, he enters a state of deep concentration, often referred to as flow, where he is fully immersed in the task at hand. This intense focus allows him to perform complex procedures with precision and confidence. The surgeon's ability to maintain this level of concentration is not innate, but cultivated through years of practice and mental discipline. Practical Application To help readers develop their focus, the author suggests several practical exercises. One such exercise is the focus sprint, where individuals set a timer for a specific period, e.g., 25 minutes, and work on a single task without interruption. After the sprint, they take a short break before starting another session. This technique, known as the Pomodoro Technique, helps to build the habit of sustained attention and can significantly improve productivity. Another strategy involves creating an environment conducive to focus. This means minimizing distractions by turning off notifications, organizing the workspace, and setting clear boundaries with others during focused work periods. The authors also recommend mindfulness practices, such as meditation, to enhance one's ability to concentrate and stay present. By implementing these strategies, Individuals can sharpen their focus, leading to more effective and efficient pursuit of their goals. 4. Emotional balance. Winners can perceive and predict emotional reactions in themselves and others, allowing them to start, halt, and alter emotions to meet any scenario. Essentially, they use emotions to their advantage rather than allowing them to rule them. Brain activity is responsible for all of your emotions. Some of this activity is forced while others are chosen. In any situation, though, how you feel determines how you act. Most people consider sentiments like happiness and satisfaction to be always positive. In contrast, feelings like wrath and violence are always negative. Winners, on the other hand, recognize that categorizing their feelings as good or bad isn't the most correct approach to do so. Helpful or not is a better way to look at them. In each event, two emotional aspects will decide your success. Selecting the appropriate emotion and determining the proper intensity of that feeling. For example, rage and violence may be reasonable responses in many cases, but too much or too little may derail the scenario. Winners understand the link between their emotions and their actions and that they have control over their feelings. Reframing the scenario to match your requirements is a powerful method for selecting your feelings. It may sound cliche, but seeing a situation as a challenge rather than a problem may have a significant impact on the activities you take next. Understanding Emotional Balance The book explains that emotional balance involves both self-regulation and empathy. Self-regulation is the ability to control one's emotional responses, preventing negative emotions from overwhelming rational thought. Empathy, on the other hand, is the capacity to understand and share the feelings of others, which is crucial for building strong relationships and navigating social interactions. The authors emphasize that emotional balance is not about suppressing emotions, but about managing them in a way that supports one's goals and well-being. This involves being aware of one's emotional triggers and developing strategies to cope with them effectively. Example from the book. One powerful example from the book involves a high-stakes negotiator who relies on emotional balance to succeed in his career. During intense negotiations, he often encounters aggressive and confrontational behavior from the other party. Instead of reacting impulsively, he uses his emotional balance to stay calm and composed. 
He recognizes his own emotional responses and employs techniques such as deep breathing and positive self-talk to maintain his focus. By managing his emotions effectively, he is able to think clearly, make strategic decisions, and ultimately achieve favorable outcomes in negotiations. Practical Application To help readers develop emotional balance, the authors suggest several practical exercises. One such exercise is mindfulness meditation, which involves paying attention to the present moment without judgment. This practice helps individuals become more aware of their emotions and develop the ability to respond to them thoughtfully rather than react impulsively. Another strategy is cognitive reappraisal, which involves reframing negative thoughts in a more positive or neutral light. For example, instead of viewing a setback as a failure, one might see it as a learning opportunity. This shift in perspective can reduce the intensity of negative emotions and promote a more balanced emotional state. The authors also recommend building a strong support network of friends, family, and colleagues who can provide emotional support and perspective during challenging times. This social support can be invaluable in maintaining emotional balance and resilience. By cultivating emotional balance, individuals can enhance their ability to navigate life's challenges build stronger relationships, and achieve their goals more effectively. 5. Memory Winners rely on memory to help them predict the future and adjust to new situations. We don't spend much time thinking about our recollections, although you are, in many ways, the sum of your memories. Everything else is in your thoughts, except for what is going on around you right now. And what a wonderful head it is. Toddlers begin to acquire and remember the meaning of up to 10 words every day at 18 months. By the time they reach adulthood, they will be able to identify around 60,000 words. But first and foremost, why do we save memories? According to Harvard Medical School scholar Moshe Bar, most people see memory as if it were a videotape or a photo book holding all of your life's events. But it's truly there to have a direct impact on the present moment and how you perceive and interact with your surroundings. To put it another way, your memory is built to assist you in imagining, simulating, and predicting probable future occurrences. It's there to assist you in making the greatest decision you can right now. As a result, the information you keep in your memory and the information you delete has a significant role in your ability to thrive in life. So, how can we build a memory bank that will assist us in getting where we want to go? You may help your mind by exposing it to as many fresh experiences as possible. It doesn't have to be anything monumental, such as jumping out of an aircraft. It might be as basic as learning a few new phrases or experimenting with a different shampoo brand. Develop this practice, and your mind will eventually rely on a larger pool of memories to assist you in getting where you want to go. Another option is to repeat the information that you wish to recall. The more you do something or learn something in a specific method, the easier it is to remember when you need it. Understanding Memory the book explains that memory is composed of different types, including short-term memory, long-term memory, and working memory. Short-term memory holds information temporarily, while long-term memory stores information for extended periods. Working memory, on the other hand, is the brain's ability to hold and manipulate information in real time, which is essential for tasks such as reasoning and comprehension. The authors highlight that memory is not a static trait, but a dynamic skill that can be improved with practice and the right strategies. They introduce techniques to enhance memory, such as mnemonic devices, visualization, and the method of loci, which involves associating information with specific locations. Example from the book. One notable example from the book involves a medical student who struggled with retaining vast amounts of information required for his studies. By applying memory-enhancing techniques, he was able to significantly improve his recall abilities. He used mnemonic devices to create associations between complex medical terms and familiar concepts, making it easier to remember them. Additionally, he practiced visualization by creating mental images of anatomical structures, which helped him to better understand and retain the information. These strategies not only improved his memory, but also boosted his confidence in academic performance. Practical Application To help readers develop their memory, the author suggests several practical exercises. One effective method is the use of mnemonic devices, 
which are memory aids that create associations between new information and familiar concepts. For example, to remember the order of the planets in the solar system, one might use the phrase, my very educated mother just served us noodles, where each word's first letter corresponds to a planet. Another strategy is the method of loci, which involves visualizing a familiar place and associating pieces of information with specific locations within that place. This technique leverages the brain's spatial memory to enhance recall. For instance, to remember a list of items, one might imagine placing each item in a different room of their house. The authors also recommend regular practice and repetition to reinforce memory. This can be done through activities such as flashcards, quizzes, and teaching the material to others. By consistently engaging with the information, individuals can strengthen their memory and improve their ability to recall important details. By incorporating these techniques, individuals can enhance their memory, leading to better learning, problem solving, and overall success. Six, that resilience. When winners fail, they rise at least once more than the rest of the field. They reframe failures in such a way that they benefit from them, and they understand that the trip is only ended when they say it is. The phrase locus of control was coined by psychologist Julian Rotter to characterize a person's thinking about what causes good and bad things to happen in their lives. You feel you are in charge of your own destiny when you have an internal locus of control. When you have an external locus of control, you are completely at the whim of external events. You have very little influence over your fate. Here's when it gets interesting. The world's winners are not just better at getting back up after being knocked down by life. Still, they actively seek out circumstances in which they are nearly guaranteed to fail. They anticipate failure. They'll be tripped up along the road, not because they're not good enough, but because what they're attempting to do is so vast. Finding a resilience role model is one thing you can do to improve your own resilience. They're not difficult to get by. The acclaimed author Stephen King received so many rejection letters that he devised a method to keep track of them. Before a publisher decided to take on Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling was rejected hundreds of times. She couldn't afford a computer or the expense of photocopying her book since she was so impoverished, so she hand-typed each 90,000-word manuscript to send to each publisher. 7. Dot adaptability Winners may adapt to changing conditions, much as the brain changes over time depending on how you utilize it. Winners are acutely aware of this truth always fine-tuning their minds to ensure continuous success. Cab drivers in London are required to study the streets of London in near-photographic detail, as there are over 25,000 streets and hundreds of points of interest, such as hospitals, hotels, and sculptures. That is extraordinary in and of itself. But what's more amazing is that by keeping all of that information in their brains, they're literally reshaping their brains. Their hippocampus, in particular, expands in proportion to how long they have been on the job, demonstrating that the structure and size of your brain are directly impacted by what you encounter. Every time you think about an idea, experience an emotion, or do an action, there is a shift in your brain. Over time, these modest adjustments add up to big results. Meditation is one thing you could do to improve your brain for the better. According to studies, just eight weeks of meditation was enough to identify increased thickness in the brainstem nuclei responsible for serotonin release, linked to emotions of pleasure and well-being. 8. Brain Care Winners nourish their brains with the proper meals, as well as the appropriate amount of sleep and exercise. What is beneficial to the body is usually helpful to the mind. When you exercise, you increase your blood flow and take in greater oxygen from the air. As a result, the brain receives more oxygen and performs better. This has the long-term impact of increasing the capacity of capillaries supplying the brain, so you receive this effect all of the time, not just while you're working out. According to Arthur Kramer, a psychology professor at the University of Illinois, 30 minutes of moderate exercise, three times a week should suffice. So we've covered the exercise. What kind of nourishment does your brain require to function optimally? It's crucial to consume the correct quantity of fats in your diet. For optimum brain function, you should have a 4 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. A few meals of cold water fish, such as salmon each week, should be enough. Finally, you must obtain enough sleep after you've exercised and eaten healthily. 
You've probably heard this before, but it's worth repeating. According to Carlisle Smith, a sleep researcher and psychology professor at Trent University, a full night's sleep can result in a 20 to 30% increase in motor abilities. If you're having trouble sleeping, meditation is one of the most effective techniques to fall asleep and remain asleep. It will not only help you fall asleep, but it will also help you improve the quality of your sleep if you practice it regularly. It's a two-for-one remedy for sleeplessness. Conclusion Your brain is a finely tuned machine, and how you use and maintain it will help determine your life success. Please treat it with respect. Thank you for listening. I hope this content is useful to you. If you like this kind of content, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel to support our team.